I sat down with Roberta Anand, founder and head of the Africa Fashion Fund, to discuss the way forward for creative entrepreneurs. She talked about the investment opportunities in the sector. Let's take a listen. Understand what it is that we have in Africa, like the raw materials. Find out how we can get, even getting international expertise to help us package it and commercialize it. Put the right IPs and put the right policies in place to be able to scale it to other markets or even like them um, um, taking advantage of Africa and selling it um, within um, the continent itself. But one thing that we're doing is AFF has been in um, existence since 2014. We've supported a lot of fashion designers. But last year I launched IFAC, which is the um, Creative Arts Fund, which is a 100 million euro fund that's supporting the entire gamut of creativity, so from film to music to fashion. Because I feel this is a time in Africa needs this, and this is how we're going to create those jobs. If we're talking about a Ghana, Ghana beyond aid or Africa beyond aid, we need to create the jobs and a robust economic environment so that people can actually get to the um, position that they need to be economically. And so that's why we're starting this fund. We're in the process of raising. We're going to be um, announcing soon our first close. And you know, once that is there, it's going to be an avenue for creative on the continent to be able to get the investments that they need and the support that they need to be able to grow. So what is it that, that newcomers are really looking for, even for or even existing businesses? What kind of support do they need? I believe the creativity is it's not an issue here. There, there are lots of, I think the biggest thing that Africans have is the human capital, the re human resource and human capital. It's not just the natural resources that are here, the people. And we have a very young generation again, if I may reiterate that point. But I think what we lack is not just funding, but really being able to understand how the value and ch chain or the supply chain works and what is needed at each level of the value chain. So how do we cross, put everything into place to make it like a vertical integration to ensure that from just the raw material to the finished product or to the retailer, how do we ensure that we're adding value at each point, number one? What are the things that we're looking at outside? When I say infrastructure, I talk about things like intellectual property, for instance. Um, a lot of designers and people in the creative economy don't necessarily have IP to protect their work. And when you don't have the right intellectual property, then it's very difficult to commercialize something, right? So if I can make this outfit and sell it for 20, but the seamstress next door can make it and sell it for 10. Right. There's no patent in this, there's no, commercial, there's, there's no commercial angle to it. So as an investor, what am I investing in? <laughs> so that is one of the th key things that we need to look at when we talk about infrastructure. We also talk about policies. That's why I like this whole actor, because it's going to create an avenue for us to trade and looking, targeting this 2.4 billion population versus trying to figure things out internally as a country, we can start trading, we can make goods here and sell it in Nigeria and still make a profit. And then also targeting overseas market, you know. But there is gro there's room for growth and um, there, there's an opportunity there if we do things properly as a collective.